It's Madden NFL 24, and it's presented by EA Sports. It's the Baltimore Ravens and the Tennessee Titans. All that and more coming up next. We are in a sweet spot as far as football weather is concerned today in Nashville. Just enough chill in the air for a sweatshirt, light breeze, fall in full swing at Nissan Stadium. Coming up, we've got what should prove to be a good one, as it'll be the Baltimore Ravens taking on the Tennessee Titans. Brandon Gordon joined by Tennessee Sports Hall of Famer Charles Davis. And CD, these Titans stumbled a bit last year. They were coming off six straight winning seasons, a number one seed in 2021, but they fell to seven and 10 a year ago. A major surprise because it certainly looked like they had the division locked up around midseason. The big key for them, more consistency at the quarterback position, keeping their guy healthy and being able to run the football as impressively as they've done in the past. And meanwhile, for the visiting Ravens, I think everybody seems ready to turn the page from 2022. A tough finish down the stretch. Some wacky plays in that loss to the Bengals in the wild card round. They just want to reset and come out swinging in 2023. Oh, I love how you just expressed that. You're exactly right. Reset and come out playing Ravens football again. And look, they had some anxious moments in the offseason. Now, a sigh of relief. They have their key pieces in place. They're ready to attack. Seems like we were just starting training camp, but here we are in October, and off we go on EA Sports. And we will not get a run back here to start. It's a touchback, and it will come out to the 25. Well, the Titans ready to take over on offense for the first time, and it is the now 35-year-old Ryan Tannehill who leads him out in his 12th NFL campaign. Those who expected Ryan Tannehill to go quietly into the night after the Titans drafted Will Levis, but they clearly don't know this man well at all. He's a fighter and former comeback player of the year and expects to have his best season yet as a pro in this campaign. Tannehill to throw on the first play. That's caught Nick Westbrook Aquino with it. A heavy taken down, but not before they reach the 50. And it goes a gain of 25 on a play that started back at the 25. But one of the ways the quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field. And here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. The NFL's leading rusher in 2019 and 2020, Derrick Henry. It was Jadavian Clowney who got upfield for the stop. With his size, he's a tough man to bring down, but they do a nice job there stopping his progress and not allowing him to get back to the line of scrimmage. So a step in the wrong direction. Now they'll look to make amends on second and 14. From the gun, here's Tannehill. And his throw's going to be incomplete. I think he could have scanned downfield forever, but there wasn't anything available. Ends up throwing an incompletion, and I think he'll take that. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means he'll need to come up with something here on third down. Here's Tannehill. A short throw taken in by a conqueror. And he is out of bounds inside the 35. Able to convert on third and 14, a terrific play call. And this was a nice example of an offensive coordinator scheming his guy open, just a little underneath route, just trying to free up some space, and it worked awfully well. Got him not just space, but plenty of room to run after the catch to pick up really nice yardage. So in Raven territory now, here's a first and 10 down at the 33. Tannehill going to turn and give this to Henry. And taking it to the 15-yard line before he's brought down. Another big gainer that time. This one goes for 19 yards. Quite the opening drive march they're on right now. It looks a lot like what we saw in practice prior to the game, doesn't it? You know, because on that last big practice beforehand, you go through your offensive script. You go through your play calling. You go through all the stuff and establish things. And it looks like it's going like clockwork right now for them. Touchdown, Graham. 
And the Titans are on the board first here this afternoon. You know, as a head coach, you can't hide everything from your team. They know that people think that they're not supposed to be on the field with them. So they designed a heck of a game plan, didn't they? Nice fast start, get out after them, and maybe let everyone know that they're here to compete. And get this home crowd behind them early as well. Yeah, that's a huge part of it, isn't it? Because if you get the home crowd involved, sometimes you can ride that wave, and that gives you a little added pep. this one away. Duvernay going to sit on this in the end zone, so it'll come out to the 25. The Ravens' offense set to go to work, and it's Lamar Jackson now in his sixth NFL campaign who will lead the way. All the talk of Jackson leaving the Ravens this offseason was just that. Talk as the two sides hammered out a deal that made the highest paid player in the NFL. And why would they want to separate? When he has the ball in his hands, Great things typically happen. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. And they'll begin by running the option. And he will lose yardage and be backed up to the 24. They'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. Not a lot of success to be found there. Oh, you got that right, partner, because if you're trying to make guys miss about 10 yards or so downfield, that's a pretty good play. But if you've got to do it in your own backfield, I consider that a problem. That doesn't work too well. First carry now for Gus Edwards. And again, the run defense stopped this time. He maybe gets back to the line of scrimmage, but no more. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. What do they have for this? Third and 11. From the gun, it's Jackson. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And they'll get it all the way up about five yards shy of midfield. Last play, they got stuffed at the line. Different story here, over 20 yards. I know at the end of games, coaches always tell us that no one play won or lost a game. But this seems pretty important early, doesn't it? Their ability to pick up that first down on third down, I thought that was key. Well, you're already in the hole after the touchdown on the other side. How will you respond? We talk about that a lot, and they responded pretty well there. You go three and out, I think you give up a lot of momentum. You get down two scores, could be an entirely different game. So they've got a nice drive going now. They're in good shape. What's interesting to me is they're also in that spot of the field where you would take a shot. Do you change that up just because you're down a touchdown? That's pretty much me and potatoes right there, wasn't it? It, just go right at them and let your big horse charge up the middle. Not too fancy there, was it? Nothing fancy at all, challenging that defense. And on that go around, the offense won the challenge. They'll go back to Edwards on first down and down to the 36 yard line here. A solid run on first down, gain of seven, leaves him with a second and three. Now you often say that sort of opens the playbook now, second and short. What do you think, early shot here? I like where you're going. Obviously, we've been together for a while because you know me. I want to take that shot early and loosen things up. On second down, it's Edwards. And this won't be enough to pick up the first. A gain of two, third and one. If they're going to get a first down out of this, they're going to have to earn it because there's been tough going in the interior there. And here we are on third and one. Be prepared. Brace yourself. Could be some contact going on. This will be play number seven on the drive. Third and a yard. To throw is Jackson. He's got his target. That's complete. And he will have a Ravens first down as they're able to convert by plenty there on third and one. Well, they kept it simple there, CD, only needing the short gain to move the chain, so they didn't want to go with a deep throw. They just go with that safer, shorter throw and able to convert. Nothing wrong with that at all, partner. Check the box, right? Make sure you pick up the first down. Offense is getting established. You're moving the ball. You're not turning it over. Check, check, check. They like what they're doing early in the game. And inside the 
20 before he's brought down. The Raven passing game getting in sync. Another first down. And this has been a nice answer to the touchdown drive against them a few minutes ago because they've come out and reestablished the tempo. A nice throw there, and they're putting together a very strong drive as a response. From the red zone now, here's Jackson on first down. Looking end zone, but it's incomplete. The coverage was good, but I just wonder if they absolutely fooled the quarterback on that play. I think he was expecting something else. Ended up with nowhere to throw the football successfully. Second and ten. Here's Jackson to throw. He finds Bateman over the middle. And the Ravens are going to be set up with a first and goal on a pass play that moves them all the way down to the one. I think he has to be saying to himself, how did that not wind up a touchdown? Remember, he just did the tip of the ball across the plane. It's not going to get there, but they're going to be set up in great shape with first and goal. First and goal and a chance to get that initial touchdown right back. Enforcement's coming as they're going to stop him behind the line. It's a loss of four there, bringing up second down. Kept it in his hands and tried to push it across the goal line himself, but the defensive front wouldn't allow him to do so. Bringing up second down and a bit farther. Back at the five-yard line now, second and goal. Jackson going to give this one to Edwards. And he will take it in for a Ravens touchdown. Gus Edwards, a five-yard touchdown run. And the Ravens respond to that opening drive touchdown with one of their own. And that caps off what was really a balanced opening drive for them, Charles. They work in the rushing game and the aerial attack, and they end it with a touchdown. Strong in so many ways, wasn't it, partner? Their ability to throw it and run it and accomplish their goal, they've got to like the way that they started this ball game. Tucker with the extra point, and we are tied at seven. Each team's had it. Each team has scored. 7-7 here as the kick's away. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And tackled at the 21-yard line, so a net negative there of four yards. The Titans coming back onto the field for their second drive. So both of these teams, Charles, coming off touchdowns now, but this offense... They just had to stand on the sideline, watch their opponent author a really impressive drive to reach the end zone. Yeah, and I think you're not telling yourself the truth if you don't think there's some one-upsmanship going on right now because they just had their touchdown answered by a drive of double-digit plays that also found the end zone. Now they want to do something even more impressive to answer that one. Judavian Clowney there on the stop. It's rare that a man his size can at least push forward for a yard, but they stopped him there for nothing. You're talking about Tiny? You're talking about the little guy back tiny. there? That monster. Yeah, you're exactly right. And it takes a group effort to get a guy like that down and not let him find some space. The first guy in, he's got to take one for the team, right? Because he's just waiting there and holding on for everyone else to help him out. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. His first catch there, good for 10 yards and a first down. So run sharp in this game. I mean, a touchdown pass in the first drive. It comes right back, and he's flinging it around really well here. A really nice throw there to pick up the first down. You, you kind of just feel a laser focus and confidence about him, and I think we saw that this week, didn't we? Talking to him and the coaches, they felt good about his performance coming up. Yeah, I was really impressed with that last practice we saw. When they went through two-minute drill, when they went through all the different situations, that hardly hit the ground, and I thought... Yeah, he might be locked in for this one. Next receivers have spread the defense out, and they were able to come through with a slashing run. But to that point, it's going to be interesting to see the personnel chess match as this one progresses. Yeah, you're exactly right. Can they continue to create running lanes out of passing sets? And if so, it's going to be a long day for the defense. 
Meanwhile, Tannehill's that's taken in by a Conquer. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. When an offense reads blitz, doesn't matter where it's coming from, tight ends know that they become a big part of the passing game because there should be an easy outlet when all those extra bodies are trying to get to the quarterback. A hot route, so to speak. On first and ten, Tannehill. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. He did an okay job of absorbing the hit, just couldn't secure the football through the catch. And he was right there on the spot and forced the incompletion. That's something defenders work on all the time. If you're there, make the contact, but continue to work your way through the receiver so that he can't possess the football and turn it into a catch. Another throw on second down, and this one incomplete as well. And that's the knowledge you gain from being in this league for a long time. He's learned the hard way when to give up and fight another down. And that's a smart move to throw it away. Here comes the seventh play now of this drive, as this is third and ten. Out of the gun, Tannehill. And that will be incomplete. How about that? Red man coverage and decided to test them early. But it proved up to the task and forced the incompletion. Now on fourth down, here's Ryan Stonehouse to punt for Tennessee. And this one hits at the three and then bounds into the end zone for a touchback. Baltimore is set to take over here for their second possession of the game. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out looking to repeat that in Charles' defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. Now a deep ball going to be caught here near midfield. And he'll be taken down, but not before they reach the 50. Heck of a start, a 30-yard pickup on their first play from scrimmage. I'm pretty sure any quarterback will tell you it's nice to have a tight end that can stretch the field. And how about him right there, working in the heart of the defense, and they connect on a very nice play downfield, a combination of talent and toughness to go into the briar patch. So the line of scrimmage all the way up to midfield now as they've got it first and ten. Jackson options out left and holding it maybe the wrong decision as he stopped in the backfield. Not just a cover guy, Roger McCreary getting back behind the line of scrimmage on that play. I don't think there's any doubt that if it's me, I'd be really cautious about continuing to call this play because you got to know. Defenders, if they get a free shot at the QB, they want to take it, and they want to take it big. And they got it there on the option play for a loss. The quick feet by Jackson, and he'll go down shy of the 40 at the 41. He gets 12 on the keeper there, but now it's third down. And this, I mean, it's certainly something to watch out for. He is not afraid to call his own number on plays like that. And here he takes it for good yardage. And we know this defense prepared all week for this, but sometimes when you see it in person, it's a whole different ball game. And all that preparation, it goes right out the window. On third and one, Jackson. And a throw there going to be incomplete. Some mistakes already in the first quarter. If he holds on to that one, first down. Yeah, I guarantee you that at least one defensive back out there has reminded him of that fact, trying to get into his head and hoping that'll affect him the rest of the game. Feeling like they're not quite in field goal range yet. They're going to go for it on four. They'll run for it. It's Edwards. And he gets it to the 34. Good enough for the first. Well, we kind of looked at each other as they decided to go for it, but in the end, great execution, a six-yard gain, and it all works out. Okay, you and I are sitting up here getting ready to analyze whether they should go for it or not. Did you see the quarterback just point to the sideline and say, uh-uh, everybody back. 
I've got this call. Well, you knew this side of the field, they're in plus territory, fourth and one. He wasn't coming off the field. No, he wasn't coming off the field. He wasn't letting the offense go with him at all. He said, we're staying out here, and we're picking this one up. That's some leadership right there. Yeah, things were pretty stacked up there in the middle of the line. A lot of bodies, not much space. I think ultimately, he was fortunate to get anything out of that run. Play action. Now Jackson. This one caught by his tight end, Andrews. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Titans 14. 19 yards to pick up there. Move the chains. Partner, you know when we call a game, we talk about Lamar Jackson and his speed and his elusiveness and the ability to get him on the ground, how tough that is for a defense. But how about his development as a thrower, as a professional? Here's a first and 10 at the 14-yard line. Jackson. Well, he short arms that one just a bit. It's low and incomplete. Even the greats in this game, and, and he certainly qualifies as one of them, they're going to have trouble if they continue to throw into double coverage. He better be careful. Throwing into too much double coverage might have a couple of them picked off. Here's second and 10. Now it's Jackson. And this one is going to be off the mark, too far out in front. This drive, which was going so smoothly, all of a sudden it's a little bit of a roadblock here with two straight incompletions. Yeah, apparently this defense has had enough. Apparently they're saying no more. We're making a stand right here, right now. But it is third and ten. They've got to get after him one more time. Jackson will throw again. And that is incomplete, but a penalty flag coming in. This could be a first down. Well, that one hurts. I mean, it was third down, of course, but now the penalty, and we're back to first down. Yeah, it hurts momentum in a big way, and they built that up here in the early going. Now that leaves the opposition with a first down. That's a mistake you don't want to make at this point in the game. Up the middle, here's Edwards. And he has met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. No gain on the play that time, but it sets up second and goal. So if you've been playing defense in this one, there's a little bit of the good and some bad because they did give up the touchdown run to him earlier, but shut him down otherwise. Outside of that, you're exactly right. I would say they've contained him very well. On second down, here's Jackson. Got a man, it's caught for a Ravens touchdown. Gus Edwards, he scored on the ground and through the air. And the Ravens have taken the lead. Well, he wasn't the guy they were initially going for, but after going through the progressions, it worked. When you have plenty of people who can catch the football, you don't always have to go to your primary target, and sometimes that target is actually covered. Nice job coming off of that and getting it to someone who was open. And yeah, the man out of the backfield gets in for the score. Tucker able to connect on the extra point, and that makes the score 14-7. to Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. And he'll just take a seat, and the drive will begin at the 25-yard line. Here's Tennessee ready to begin this drive offensively. Over on the sideline, hoping to hit that reset button between possessions. Last time out, they had to punt it away. This time, hoping to finish this thing off of the end zone. Tannehill and the Titans come up now first and 10 at their 25-yard line. He'll start with a give to Henry, and he'll fight forward on the straight-ahead running for just a couple of yards, second down. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here, and what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while, get at least two first downs, give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. They'll break the huddle, come up on second and eight at the 27-yard line. 
Tannehill. And that one going to be off target and incomplete. Well, if you have man coverage on the outside, and my scouting report on these DBs tells me that they love to take matters in their own hands. They want man coverage, not zone. And there was good coverage there that forced the incompletion. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves them staring up here at a third and eight. Now Tannehill. A throw out wide going to be incomplete. I'll tell you what, these last couple of drives, much better from a defensive perspective. They gave up a touchdown on the opening drive, and then after forcing a punt on their last possession, it looks like they're going to hit the football back again. On uh, fourth down, Ryan Stonehouse on the punt. This is brought in at the 21. That'll be a 50-yard punt with eight on the return. And the Ravens, they'll take over. Now the Baltimore offense heading back out onto the field. Now right now they're saying, hey, let's keep this going. Two drives, two touchdowns. Yeah, can't ask for a better start than that, can you? I mean, this is the way you practice it. This is the way you rehearse it. But right now, the play calling, they're locked in really well. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10, just shy of the 30. They'll start with the option. And he'll be taken down, but not before they reach the 50. Beating him there with his legs, 21 yards, first down. It looked like almost a miscommunication defensively because once he decided to keep it, he had pretty smooth sailing. Yeah, it became a question of, wait a minute, who's got the quarterback? And when you talk about miscommunication, it's supposed to be called assignment football on the defensive side of the ball, but the assignment gets mixed up. That's the end result. From midfield now, here's Jackson. Throw left side, complete. That's Andrews. That'll go for a gain of seven, and it's second down. Through one corner, 14-7, our score. Raven football here as we begin quarter number two. From the 43, it's second and three as they've got it as we resume action. On second down, Hill. And he stopped immediately there. Call it no gain that time as it's going to leave him with a third and about three to go. And when the defense wins and gives up no yardage on a running play, that's something they can build on and carry themselves forward throughout the game. The Ravens on third down. They've been okay, two for three thus far. Here it's third and three. They'll try and run for it with Hill. And he'll be tackled about two yards shy of the line to gain. A one-yard pickup leads to fourth down. Now that was a big-time play by the defense. They as well knew where the first down line was, and they didn't let them get anywhere near it. So now they're going to send out the field goal unit to, as they say, fire away from long distance. This will be spotted just shy of midfield. A 59-yard attempt. And he missed it. It's no good. And this will remain a one-touchdown game. But this is a commentary on today's kickers and just how good they are that a coach would think about running his guy out there to try a 59-yarder. Here it backfires on him, but as a kicker, you have to appreciate the confidence that they showed in you. And here comes Tennessee as they get set to take the field. And Charles, a very uninspired effort the last time we saw them out there was a quick three and out, and then they punted the football. Yeah, and you never want to get stopped so soundly during a series, but what would be even worse now is letting it happen again right here. They've got to get going. So they tried the 59-yarder and missed it, and now this offense starts just one yard shy of midfield. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. I would say it might be a good idea for him to reintroduce himself to his receivers at the half because they're definitely on different wavelengths. But I also don't advocate waiting that long. Next series, before you get out there, hey, let's get together, guys. Let's get this thing moving. Now a second and 10. Here's Tannehill. He gets this one to Burks. Five 
five yards. Now it's third and five. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. Here is third and five. Here's Tannehill. That's caught by his tight end, Trevon Wesco. And he will have a Titans first down. He needed five. He got it barely as it will officially go down as a gain of five yards. At first glance, I thought he just used his size in order to win the route. But he also had a little subtle move in there as well. Made the defender think he was going one direction and was able to track the ball in another. Tannehill on first down. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Oh, I like the calmness of how he played the ball here. No panic in his eyes as that throw arrived. Tracked it from the moment it left the quarterback's hand, and that's just where he needed to be to knock it away. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Inside handoff, Henry. And little room to maneuver there. He gets it down to about the 39. They do get a yard there, but only a yard. Leaves him with third and nine looming. When we talk about defenders, specifically linebackers, keeping their eyes in the right spot. He had that eye down the entire time. And you know that's not easily done because they throw a lot of misdirection at you. They try and fool you and get your eyes in the wrong place. But you're right about that one. He correctly figured that one out and made a really nice play. And Tannehill's got the first as he slides to a halt. Tannehill able to take off and pick up the first as well. Certainly not a positive sign if you're the D coordinator and you see your guys give up that space so early in the game. Third down, that's when the clamps are supposed to come out, but his ability to create things with his legs makes things difficult. A first down carry for Henry. And they will eventually get him down, but he's inside the five all the way to the three. 49 yards now on the ground on just seven carries. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember the last drive, they went three and out. It looks like a jumbo set with three tight ends here for first and goal. Henry will score. Touchdown, Tennessee. Just power the football there down near the goal line. Give it to him. He's able to push his way across. Yeah, they went heavy there. Sometimes you have those big offensive linemen come and have to report like they're eligible. But all they're doing is getting a good stance, blocking, and getting their runner across the goal line. On for the extra point is full. And we've got a good one brewing. We're all knotted up at 14. So that drive goes eight plays. And Derrick Henry able to finish it off with a touchdown run. Tied at 14 now as he sends this one away. No run back here for Duvernay. Touchback out to the 25. Baltimore about ready to go on offense. The last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, get this a little time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. On first and ten, it's Jackson. Trying to get it to Beckham, and it's intercepted. Put down by Christian Fulton. And they are going to set up shop at the 40-yard line. And Brandon, this is a real nice job defensively of getting inside a quarterback's head and figuring out, okay, where is he going with the football? Because you can make an educated guess defensively, not all the time, but sometimes. And when you're right, you've got a decent chance of coming away with the football. 
The Titans now just about ready to take over. Now, these guys hardly got a chance to catch their breath after the quick turnover, but I doubt they're complaining much. Especially with the field position they get to start with. I wouldn't be complaining either. I'd want to get right back out there and get after them because now you have an opportunity to make a big play. I'd say I'd let's be aggressive and go after him. After the interception, here's Tannehill. Going to the right here, finding Burks. And brought down, but able to get it to their 30-yard line. The time is called. Looks like a member of the Titans in some discomfort out there. While they come out and take a look at him, we will step aside for just a moment. So first and 10 now from the 30. A shotgun handoff to Henry. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. You don't see that a ton, do you, with a cornerback coming over to the middle of the field to make a run tackle. That's someone with a ton of confidence to feel like nothing is pressuring him on his side of the field. Sees that the ball's moved to the middle and just sprints over there to help out. He ends up getting the tackle. Well played. And this one also slow and developing as he's maybe getting back here to the line of scrimmage, but not much more than that. But defensively, they had that one pretty well figured out. Yeah, and one of the things about this play, it can be even more effective when you run a lot of motion and there's plenty of times you don't hand it off. Throwing on third down, Tannehill. And he's going to go down. They get to him back at the 40. Multiple players combined for their team's first sack of the game. Now that was a passer's nightmare. The front door totally shut down by the defense, so he kept going backwards, hoping to find another avenue of escape. It didn't exist. Here's Ryan Stonehouse now as he's on to punt for Tennessee. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. And this will depend on the spot as it sails out of bounds. And they'll say it sailed out at the 10-yard line. So well done there. And these punters, they get more specialized and better each and every year, don't they? They sure do. And now it's really not the American punters. It's the Australian punters with their kicking academies and that flat drop and just kind of kicking the nose of the football. They're able to almost stop it where they want to like a good golfer can check one up. They'll motion the tight end across the formation. They'll run with Edwards here to begin the drive. And he's brought down, but not before they get it across the 20-yard line. 44 yards rushing now on eight carries for him so far. That was good, tough running right up the middle. And if the defense can't penetrate and make him slow his pace or change direction, that's often the end result. Edwards now on first and ten. And he'll power ahead, but only for about three yards. Second down coming up. Yeah, I don't know if it's exactly a win-win, but if you're on offense, you'll take that kind of a run, all right? It was kind of stacked up, found a little bit of yardage, and frankly, they're pretty close to staying on schedule on offense. The playbook is still open for the coordinator. Now an option play on second down. The quick feet by Jackson. And he takes this up to the 40-yard line before being corralled. Really good effort. He does it himself, picks up 15, also picks up the first down. Well, partner, for a few years there, we thought this read option play was going to take over the whole NFL. It seemed like everyone was using it. But it has been scaled back considerably in the last few seasons, mainly because people worried about their quarterbacks getting hit. But when you call it at the right time and you use it properly, you see the type of gains you can get. A nice chunk of yardage there by the quarterback. A good pick up there at 22. Good strong throw and catch right there. And so far in this game, the alleys have been open for them to get completions, and they're taking advantage of it.
So operating from Tennessee territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 37-yard line. Well, went into the hands of Flowers. And he's brought down at the 19 after a gain of 19. First down in the red zone. Oh, that was a nice job there. Quarterback and receiver reading the pressure that was brought. They both knew it was going to open up the middle of the field. Nice little shake and bake at the line of scrimmage. Got right into his route. And the quarterback hit him in stride, and he was able to run free after the catch. They'll throw on first down with Jackson. And his throw here is incomplete. He didn't just deny a big throw there. He broke that one up in the red zone. An excellent play, one that may help save points on the board when this drive is over. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and 10. And they run with Edwards off the option. And he'll get him inside the 15 down to the 14-yard line. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. That second down play call was not to pick up the first down. It was to accomplish what they did to get him into a manageable third down because they had the incompletion on first down, so they were behind the sticks, so to speak. They needed to make up some ground, and they did. On third down, Jackson. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And the Ravens are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. Well, they've had a great, impressive drive going here, and that pickup ensures the drive continues. And not only do you continue the drive, which is demoralizing for the guys on the defensive side of the ball right now, but you make your own defense happy. They're able to get a little more rest over on the sidelines while this one continues downfield. They'll run here with Edwards. And he gets him a little bit closer. He takes it from the six inside the five to the four. That didn't just feel like good defense there. That felt like pride, didn't it? He's already gotten into the end zone twice, trying to get there for a third time. No one likes to have the hat trick against them. Second and goal from inside the five. Once more, Edwards. And he will force his way into the end zone for a Ravens touchdown. Gus Edwards on his way to a monster game. Three first-half touchdowns. And the Ravens go coast-to-coast coast and finish the drive off with six points. Well, uh, wherever he is on the field, he is certainly slippery with a football in his hands, and he proved it right there. And normally moves like that aren't supposed to work this deep in the red zone because there's not enough space. Normally way more effective when you're working out in the open field. But here, incredible shiftiness, excellent contact balance, and he works his way into the end zone. Tucker with the extra point, and the lead is now 21-14. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. And this will not be brought out. It's a touchback. And the Titans getting set to go. They'll look for a drive to tie this up. Down 21-14 as they have it first and 10. Tannehill now to throw. Open man, Westbrook Aquino. And he's taken down right at the 45-yard line. That one goes for 30 yards. What my dad would say sometimes, I'm just scratching my head here trying to figure out what was going on there defensively. How did you lose him in the middle of the field? If you're going to lose a receiver, make sure it's someone on the short side of things, not deep downfield, that can hurt your defense. So the big play moves him all the way across midfield. It's first and 10 from the 45. Tenth carry now for Derrick Henry. Down to the 42, second down. 
Give credit to the defense for stringing that play out, and they gave up no cutback angle. You know he was trying to dart through. No place for him to go. A nice job there, only giving up a three-yard gain. Here's second and seven. Now it's Tannehill. His throw incomplete. A misconnection there. He's hit on just 50% of his passes thus far. That's not where you want to be. Now you see the evolution of the game. You go back to the quarterbacks of old, 50% would be terrific because they threw the ball downfield almost every time they threw it. Now with the short passing game, you should be above 60% just to be in the average range. A shotgun snap for Tannehill. And he's going to be sacked. They sack him back right at the midfield stripe. Patrick Queen got in there to stick him. He gets the sack. Even keeping the back in for extra protection on third down, they still couldn't prevent the sack. Now it's fourth and long thanks to a terrific individual effort on defense. Here's Ryan Stonehouse now. He'll boot it away from about his 35. And he gets it away, a directional kick going toward the sideline. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. Gus Edwards heading back onto the field. Good returns on the last drive. He hit the end zone for the second time. Good returns in this first half, really. Yeah, good returns for his team. Really good returns for the guy. And you know where I'm fantasy. going. Darn right. Those fantasy guys who have him on their team, they're rejoicing right now. And they have a high expectation. That what they've seen already There's will continue. More. You yes. talk about fantasy a lot, but you don't. Why don't you just play? You know, I'm not good enough to play Stop a fantasy it. game. Stop I enjoy it. watching. You're an analyst. You do it. You're an expert. I mean, you were a champ last year. Keep it up. Fifth place. Okay. Well, he's a champ in my book. And they're able to get this one across the 35. 72 yards rushing for him as he has been tough to stop here this first down. And that's the big fella's M.O. right there. Running through tackles, keeping the sticks moving forward. And this defense, if you don't bring 11 guys to the ball to try and get him on the ground, he's going to keep making runs like that. I feel the press box shaking every time he touches the rock. Now Jackson on first down. Looking left side, Andrews with it complete. And now hang on here. Looks like we have an injured player. Yeah, Mark Andrews is in some discomfort. So as the medical staff takes a look, we'll step aside. From the 44 now, here's second and four. Off the play fake. Here's Jackson. That's going deep for Bateman. This is caught inside the 15. And all the way in for a Ravens touchdown. Rashad Bateman, 56 yards. And the Ravens go up by two touchdowns. Well, if the plan is to come in here and go toe-to-toe -to -toe with these guys, it certainly does not hurt if you hit them with a big shot along the way, too. That's got to give them some confidence. And the other thing right now, it quiets this crowd, at least for the time being. Yeah, that is what is called the intended consequence of their actions. Tucker able to connect on the extra point, And the lead now up to 14. So they only needed three plays on that drive. And it's Rashad Bateman who finished it all off with a touchdown. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. Here's Tennessee ready to begin this drive offensively. See if they can put this drive in the end zone, Charles, because it, it's been a little bit of a rough go at times. They've had to punt the football a ton in this ball game because of stalled out drives. So are you saying that you're kind of tired of seeing the punter? run out there and do his thing during this game? Is that what you're trying to say? You, well, 
I mean, I'm okay with it. I have a feeling that this offense, they don't want to see the punter again. And frankly, the punter doesn't want to run out there anymore himself. He would love to see his offense put together a drive and give his leg a rest. A short gain of just over two yards as the first half clock dips inside of three minutes. I think they want to start getting back into this game. It behooves them to get better on first down. Yeah, certainly not what they were looking for there out of the opening play of this drive. Here's second and seven now from the 28. To throw is Tannehill. Acapro holds it in left side. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. That one covers 24 yards. It's a first down. Well, these guys have definitely been outplayed in the first half. I like their countenance. I like the way that they haven't panicked out there, the way they're carrying themselves. They're starting to move the ball. And what you have to do, maintain your poise and start to put together some drives. So in Raven territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 47. A handoff running left, Henry. And a five-yard gain gets him to the 42. Here's a second and five. Now Tannehill. Now throw on the run, but that's going to be incomplete. Some of the fans here don't seem too happy about what we've seen in this first half. No, not at all, and I understand why they've looked lethargic, out of sync, and it shows on the scoreboard. They come up now third and five following the incomplete pass. Back to throw, Tannehill. That quick throw there is incomplete. Well, how about the coverage we just saw break out on third down? Dime defense, blanketed the field with extra defensive backs and speed, unable to find an open hole to complete that pass. Here's Ryan Stonehouse now as he's on for the fifth time here today. No returning this one. It sails out of bounds, and they'll spot it right at the 20. The Baltimore Raven offense returns, and we see wide receiver Rashad Bateman bringing him out. He's already approaching 100 yards and has the touchdown, I'm sure. On that opposite sideline right now, they're scratching their heads saying, all right, what do we do? And the hard part is, even if you limit him to a short catch, he has that make you miss ability right. to take it for big yardage and put in the end zone again. So trying to blanket him is very difficult, but ultimately, You've got to find a way to put him on the ground, tackle him, and he doesn't make that easy. Well, they're struggling with that so far. And he'll get this one way up just shy of the 45-yard line. The catch and run, good for 24 yards. So many times in my career I've heard coaches talk about completions are one thing, but as long as we're there at the catch and we get guys on the ground, we can live with that. But if you're going to give up 10, 12, 15 yards after the catch, then your defense is going to be in a lot of trouble. Took just one play to move all the way to the 44 as they try again on first down. From the gun, Jackson flushed out right. And he can't find anywhere to go with it. And he goes down. It'll only be a loss of a couple, but the pressure gets home on first down. But that's what they have to do more of defensively. Not just getting sacks, but they have to keep getting in his face. Not let him get his feet set and deliver. He's been carving them up previously. Yeah, already has a couple of touchdown passes. About time they put a few grass stains on that jersey. Jackson's throw into the hands of Andrews. Now the Ravens going to use one of their timeouts. As the clock's going to stop with 47 seconds to go in half number one. Here comes third down at seven. Jackson now. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Titans' 29-yard line. That one goes for 24 yards. 
And that's well executed there on third down. And I love the confidence that they had to let their tight end try and find some space in the middle of the field right in their quarterback's line of vision. And QBs love to make that easy throw. And they hooked up there for a first down. Jackson on first down. Incomplete. And we're down to eight seconds now. And not a common sight, at least on this drive. A momentary setback, though, for this passing game. It has been moving well this series. Good thing for them, though. Still two more downs to connect and try to pick up another first down. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. Jackson will throw again. And the timing a bit off that time as that one falls to the ground. Well, it looked like a march to the end zone is hit a momentary roadblock with that incompletion. No need to panic. They just got to come up with a high percentage play call and see if they can get their offense back on track. Now with five seconds left, not really enough time to run another play and then stop it. So on comes the field goal unit. Tucker's kick is good, and that will extend their lead even further. So he missed his first attempt, remember, but this time he gets back on the bike and knocks it home. Yeah, and sometimes that first one can really impact you moving forward. It can just stay with you too long and affect everything else you do during the game. In this case, though, able to shake it off. He's riding high again. So, barring a touchback, this likely the final act of the half as the kick is away. So, we have reached halftime here with the visiting Ravens out in front. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach! Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. Back to you guys in a bit. But first, we welcome everyone to our EA Sports Halftime Report. All right, Coach, thanks very much. Fine work as always as we welcome you back for quarter number three. The Ravens ready to receive it, and they've got the lead as well as we resume play in the second half. Devin Duvernay now returning from the end zone, and only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. The Raven offense set to start this third quarter. But Charles, for them, pretty good first half on the ground. They had some success running the ball in quarters one and two, and they've got the lead now, a chance to expand upon that lead here with their first drive in the third quarter. Yeah, and believe it or not, you and I have noticed that this great game of football has shifted towards pass first, run second. So for me, it's really nice to see some of these teams keeping the ground game as a big component of their offense, and it's working pretty well for them now. And let's face it, they can continue to do damage with it. And in addition, it sets up the pass game really well for them, too. No gain there as he kept it himself at second down. Well, for that being an option play, there really weren't too many options available for him, were there? No, there weren't, and at least he was able to get back to the line of scrimmage, so they didn't lose anything, but you're exactly right. Nowhere to go. Jackson. And this throw a bit late as he couldn't reach back for it. Well, he certainly didn't like what he saw at all from the coverage on his primary reads. And he didn't even have any luck trying to get back to his safety valve. Give defense a credit. Coverage was in lockdown mode everywhere. An incomplete pass on second down. That muddles things a little bit here. This is third and ten. Now it's Jackson. And that is incomplete. 
Well, it's too early to figure out what kind of adjustments this defense made at halftime, but that's a good start to the second half. They cannot afford to give up more points and fall further behind, so well done to force the punting situation here. The Ravens send their punter out now. And the way this offense has moved the ball, he hasn't been needed till here in the third. And a fair catch called for and made just inside the 35-yard line. So a change of possession here on the punt, and it'll be Titan football. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. Tannehill and the Titans come up now first and 10 at the 34. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. And he slides and covers up at the end as he's going to be able to pick up decent yardage. He'll wind up getting nine after tucking it and running, so it'll leave him with second and a yard. The defense did its job of taking away a quick throw, but that's only half the battle because they've got to get to him before he can make a run for it. A little bit late containing him there, so he makes a nice gain out of a play that looked like it was in trouble. Rush coming, and he's taken down. They overload him that time on the safety blitz, and he winds up being dropped for a loss of seven. These strong safeties, some people may not realize it, it's really like an extra linebacker, right? It really is, because they're hybrids. Half linebacker, half defensive back. The linebacker in him on that play emerged. Now Tannehill. Yeah, this pass broken up. Excellent coverage there on third down as that was not an easy one to hold on to. He did a fine job there of not hitting him before the ball arrived, and I've got to tell you, you can often mistime that play because of the angles of approach. When you're going to get him, sometimes you panic as well and think, I've got to be there right now. Instead, in this case, timed it perfectly and knocked it free. Fair catch signal for it and taken at about the 15-yard line. So possession goes over here on the punt, and it will be first and 10 as they take over. The drive starts with a carry by Edwards. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. Aziz Alshair, former 49er, in on the tackle. His defense could use a few more plays like that right now. It certainly could, but think about it from an offense's perspective right now. They've got a lead, but they don't want to throttle down too much and stall themselves. Still want to move at a nice pace. Here's Edwards again on second down. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. 78 yards for him on the ground now, as he has been terrific here this afternoon. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they're playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time, and making it work. Jackson looking to throw on third. Quick slant complete to OBJ. And he will have a Ravens first down by a couple of yards as they're able to convert here on third and three. That was simply snap, rock, and fire. I mean, they didn't take long at all. Slant route, and I loved where he put it. He put on the body of the receiver low so that only he can catch it. Yeah, I don't think there was any magical formula there. Defensively, that's just tough to defend. Very much so. And that way, it allows the receiver to keep his body in front of the defender and not allow him to go. And now off to the races, down the right side. And he takes it all the way down to the 28-yard line. A big-time gain there on the keeper, using his legs to hurt him. First down. So this play, you know, until recently, only something you'd probably expect to see in a college game, but running quarterbacks are certainly in vogue, and this turned into a big play. And you and I both know that for a long time, coaches worried about their quarterbacks taking too much punishment running plays like this, and they still worry about it. But when you can break off big chunks of yardage like that, it's worth the risk. Plus, you're coaching that quarterback to see those guys coming and get down before the big hit occurs. 
Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Well, those two have hooked up for a touchdown once already in this game, that time unable to find the completion. Yeah, it just appeared they wanted to get him out into open space and try and get him the football. As you mentioned, unable to connect. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Jackson from the shotgun. Dances by at the 20. The improv act there, good for nine. And now they'll be looking at a third and short, third and one. Oh, partner, just a second earlier. And they might have had him because they certainly thought they were going to close in and drop him behind the line of scrimmage. But he had just enough time to dodge the pressure, and he ends up getting yardage before being stopped. This will be play number seven on the drive. Third and a yard. And they'll try and run the option to pick it up. And he will have a Ravens first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. So that was all you're looking for on a play like that. Get the first down and keep the drive moving. Yeah, it just looked to me like he just said to himself, I've got this. I'll take it. I'll pick it up and let's keep moving. Get the first down, get a new set, and let's start over. Off the option, here's Edwards. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. They've called his number a lot this afternoon. You wonder how much tread is left on those tires. We certainly do, but I always think back to one of my favorite coaches in the NFL, and he used to have a meeting with his running backs every year in the offseason and say, look, as many times as you're going to carry the ball, you should be able to carry it one more time, so make sure you get in shape. And he's able to break out of one tackle, but then quickly brought down. They do get a couple, but they'll be left staring at a third and eight coming up. And let's face it, you can put any Halloween costume on him. You're not going to be able to disguise him because for a tight end of his size, difficult to sneak him anywhere, but that's what they tried to do. Lined up on his right, tried to work his way back to his left, but just a minimal gain as the defense was able to react quickly. They set up the screen to Hill. And now they're inside the 10 as he's brought down at the 9. Three yards, all they could muster there, and it'll bring up fourth down. Good reactions there defensively. That screen was a little slow in developing, and they shut that one down with little gain. So Jackson will head to the Ravens' sideline, and on comes Justin Tucker for the field goal try. From the left hash, a chip shot here. Tucker's kick is good, and that will extend their lead even further. So three more points tacked on, and this margin getting more comfortable by the minute. And with the lead where it is, you can actually feel good about field goals. We talk all the time about scoring sixes, not threes. But in this case, they're just looking to chew up some time and come away with points. Tucker now following the main field goal set to kick it away. And he'll be stopped up at the 25. And here comes Tennessee as they get set to take the field. I kind of feel like they've reached a do or die point in this game, Charles. If they're going to try to pull off an impressive comeback, it has to start right here, right now. Yeah, now they've got a final chance to get out of this situation, but they also understand they've got to move the ball and move it fast. In addition, they need to save as much time so they can get two more possessions. Tannehill and the Titans come up now first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. They'll try and start this drive in the air. Go to the right here and finding Burks. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. First down yardage on the first play of the drive, 14 yards. Well, we talk all the time about playing situational football, and right now I think the scoreboard is dictating what they need to do. Where they are in this game, they've got to push the ball downfield, take their shots, try and get big chunks of yardage in a short amount of time. That was a nice play there. And Henry gets the call there on first down as he pushes his way forward, a pickup of about five. Not a huge play, but I think they're more than happy with how it turned out. Don't be surprised to see them revisit that call because there was a lane there for more than just five yards. Put it in your back pocket and break it out when you need it later. From the 44-yard line, here's a second and five. Off play action, Tannehill. 
That's to the right sideline, and it falls incomplete. So another incompletion there. He's hitting on fewer than half his pass attempts in this one, and that is not a winning formula. Yeah, so let's make sure we give a little bit of credit to the defense here. They've given him a lot to think about, a lot of different looks, and he seems a little bit confused trying to complete passes. Here's Tannehill. He's got the first down and more. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. It's a seven-yard gain and good enough to move the chains. And Brandon, from our time in college football, where receivers weren't running the traditional NFL route tree, one thing they did learn, find open areas, find soft spots, and set up and catch the ball. And I think we just saw that there. Yeah, we saw that indeed picking up the first. And he'll take this beyond the line of scrimmage as he slides to a hole. He'll wind up getting right about four there on the scramble, and it's second down. I certainly like what he did right there because he smartly wanted to avoid forcing anything downfield because nothing appeared to be open. Nice harmless slide there to avoid the big hit, and he gets a small gain on the play. Play action. It's Tannehill. And that's going to be incomplete. Great coverage there all around. Really didn't have many options to throw the football. Very little chance that that one was going to be completed. Every receiver was locked up. Seventh play of the drive upcoming here on third and six. Tannehill now to throw. And that's complete to Westbrook Akine. And this won't do it. He needed six. He only got halfway there. One hallmark of good defenses is understanding the game, understanding positioning, and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. Got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield. And on fourth down, on is the punt team sending this one away. Out of bounds as he appeared to be looking for the corner. He got it. They're going to mark this at the four-yard line. The Ravens offense now. They get set and head back onto the field. And last time they were able to churn some clock. They got the field goal, added onto their lead. But that was a drive that was so long, it should have ended in a touchdown. You know that's how they felt. And we'll both be headed to the airport after the game. But we probably should go to the post-game press conference because <laughs> someone's going to ask the head coach about this drive, and he's going to profess that he was happy to get points. But and we wasn't? know that's not true. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. after this type of a drive, not getting a touchdown, a huge disappointment. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. And that's a nice gain by him on first down, picking up some key yardage. Second and a couple. Throw caught by Flowers. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. It's a gain of six. First down, Ravens. Now Jackson taps this forward, jet sweep. Now this will be a short gain of three before he's brought down at the 22. A nice play design there with the touch pass. Looked good at the start, but bottom line, the defense was ready. And they did a nice job scouting, didn't they? Not just scouting, but now executing once they saw the play for real after having worked on it all week in practice. They drilled on the play, then they drilled him. From the gun, they go to Edwards. And he's going to have a Ravens first down as he gets this up past the 30. Great to see Edwards back doing what he does best. Mr. Dependable for the Ravens backfield. He's faced injury woes the last two years, missing all of 2021 and almost half of 2022. But back at full strength now, he can be a load. Throwing on first down, it's Jackson. Quickly into the hands of Beckham. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant. A lot of people call it an extension of the running game, and it can be if that pass is completed. Because you hit a guy on the run like that, 
he often can go for big yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. And they run the option on second down. And he probably should have given that one off as he's going to get hit and taken down behind the line. He'll lose a yard on the play, so now they need three yards on third down. Well, he's had success running the football in this one. Yeah, that's undeniable, but that time the defense was on to it. And, partner, I think the more you see a play like this, the more they're able to diagnose it quicker and easier for them to defend it. I think you have to dress it up a little bit and show maybe some different formations and looks. The defense stiffens to force fourth down following that first down gain of eight. Well, you know, if you've got the defense laying back, maybe that option works. But if you're coming hard on third down... It doesn't work because you force the hand of the quarterback and the runner too quickly. And most of the time, unsuccessfully. The Ravens send their punter out now as he'll punt it away for the second time. And a fair catch signaled for and taken just outside the 20-yard line. It'll be a 39-yard punt, no return. And they will take over first and 10. They'll start on the ground. It's Derrick Henry. A solid stiff arm. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Give them 13 yards on the opening play of the drive and also give them a first down. Despite the score, despite the deficit, no quitting this guy. He's running angry, running through arm tackles. He wants to change what that scoreboard is saying. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Now it's Tannehill. On the throw, led him too much that time. It's incomplete. He really tried to thread that down the seam. Yeah, he tried to rip that one, didn't he? But a throw with that velocity, necessary when you're trying to hit a quick hitter like that one. Timing execution has to be perfect. Unfortunately for him, that one fell to the ground. Second 10 coming up here in Nashville. Third quarter action. Here's Tannehill. And down he goes at the 45 after a pickup of nine. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route, and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps, and cuts towards the middle of the field, and now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. They'll try to run for the first with Henry. Yeah, Henry fighting for the marker, but I don't think he got there. He did not. No gain on the play there, and it'll bring up fourth down. Another down on the scoreboard, but the urge to go for it is almost irresistible here on fourth and short. Yeah, I know. I know they're on their own side of the field. I was going to say. Normally, I would say punt the ball away, but I'm feeling it. I say go for it. Here's Ryan Stonehouse now as he's on to punt for Tennessee. And that hits at the six and carries into the end zone for a touchback. The Ravens offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. And now you've got the clock winding down here in the third quarter. Your three scores to the good. What's your approach on this drive? Too early to fully commit to playing the clock game. Yet, at the same time, you're also not going pell-mell like you would in two-minute offense. This is what NFL offenses call four-minute football. Take the clock out of the game a little bit, wind it down, but at the same time, keep advancing the ball down the field. They'll start this drive out on the ground. And he stopped right at the 25 after a gain of five. Nice satisfying run on first down for the offense, picking up five, which means defensively, the thought process is entirely different. You don't want to panic, but at the same time, you're saying to each other, we've got to tighten this down. We can't give up gains like that. Here's a second and five now from the 25. Again, it's Edwards. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. Edwards, the ball carrier. He's brought down at the 31. It's a gain of six. And the Ravens first down. Three quarters the in the books. The quarter, you are watching the, the NFL Ravens on EA Sports. Back now in Nashville. 
It's the Ravens in control of the football. They've also got the lead as we get set for the fourth. Jackson going to give this one to Edwards. And he'll power ahead, but only for about three yards. Second down coming up. That's it. That's what you want. Straight ahead, positive gain. Just keep that clock ticking. Brings up second and seven at the 35-yard line. From the 35, here's second down and seven. Up the middle, it's Edwards. And this defense able to plug him up there as he'll get a yard to the 35. Run blitz there defensively, something we might see more of here in the fourth quarter. I think we'll see a lot of it. And the difference between that and a pass blitz, pass blitz, you're just trying to get to the quarterback. You're trying to scheme someone open who will get to the QB and make sure he gets on the ground. In a run blitz, you're actually trying to cover up gaps, trying to cover up holes so they can't run the football. On third down, here's Edwards. Call it no gain there, and it leads to a fourth down. He's having a big game running the football, but that one will hurt the yards per carry a little bit. Yeah, but the average he's got so far, that's the type of average he wants to take with him to contract negotiations, doesn't he? The Ravens send their punter out now as he's on to kick it away. A call for a fair catch, and it's made at about the 23-yard line. 37 yards on the punt with no return, and that will come the offense as they take over. Tannehill and the Titans come up now first and 10 at their own 24. Looking to throw. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. I do think it's fair to say that they were caught off guard a little bit when he decided not to throw it on first down. But give them credit. They recovered in time to deny him the first down yardage. But it's only second and short. So that run is still likely to lead to a new set of downs. Here's Tannehill. And his throw is incomplete. Well, he certainly thought he had a window to push that ball downfield, but as soon as he released the throw, the corner was there to slam that window shut. After the incompletion, here now, third and two. Tannehill. That is caught, and he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. He had the touchdown earlier. This one's going to get him a first down. Well, I can put my defensive cap on right now, and I know they're saying don't give up any big plays now. They've controlled this game throughout, and all they want to do is see it through to the end. I think they let their guard down a little bit with that last completion. Sometimes when you're trying not to give up bigger plays, you don't react as fast as you should on other throws. Tannehill on first down. The throw here right sideline falls incomplete. Uh, defensively, you look at the numbers. Another incomplete pass that we just saw, and they're under 200 yards passing for the game, so they've done their job on that side of the ball. Yeah, recently I was actually working a game where a quarterback had a streak of five straight games without a 200-yard game. And that was a big talk, both in his town and amongst his team. How do we get the passing game going? So big credit to them, holding them under 200 today. And yeah, this one taken in on the right sideline, but not in the field of play. They say it's incomplete. The throw led him a little too far. It brings up third down. And now offensively, it's third and 10. And I'm just thinking to myself, actors always say, what's my motivation before a big scene? Right now, the play caller's thinking, what have I done before that's worked well that I can go to right now? Yeah, because they were pretty successful in the first half scoring points. Haven't done anything so far here in the second half. And they stop him up short of the first down as they get him at about the 43. That one good for only six, and it leaves him with a fourth down. And that's a play that's not uncommon on third and long because the offense is just hoping that somehow they can get a guy in space and follow some blockers downfield. 
Does a pretty nice job there getting a few yards, but he ends up getting stopped before he can get the first down. A short throw taken in by Conquo. And now this is going to depend on the spot. And they say he's just short. The Titans try it, but ultimately they fail on fourth down. And the Ravens are going to get the football back. Well, you feel the excitement build on those fourth down plays. Defense has to stay out there, but for the offense, when that thing doesn't work out, such disappointment. It can absolutely be a deflator, but how about the defensive guys? If they stop you on fourth down, they are absolutely elevated going to their bench. They're elevated now. Big stop on fourth down. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10 at the 39-yard line. They'll start this drive out on the ground. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. That's a good way to start the drive. 17 yards and a first down. And carries like that, that's how they're going to continue to salt this thing away here, Charles, in the fourth quarter. Yeah, how about that? A new set of downs. Clock continues to move. No better way to close out a game than to tap those mastodons you have up front and say, guys, Keep pounding them. Let's keep the ball, keep their offense on the sidelines, and let's close this one out. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. And, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. And he only manages a couple here down to about the 38-yard line. Well, praise has to go to the guys in the offensive line because they've had a very nice, productive day running the football. How about that poor defensive line? They've been knocked around the entire game, and while they slowed them down on that run, can they continue to do so? Because they haven't had much success throughout this ball game. Jackson. He's got his target. That's complete. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Titans' 27-yard line. 12 yards to pick up there. Good for a Raven first. He's been the go-to guy. They needed a big play there on third down. Went his way. It worked out. Doesn't matter whether they've scouted it or that they think he's going to get the ball. He has a knack for finding his way open and completing the connection. They go play action with Jackson. Going right back to Beckham here, complete. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. Another catch for him there. This one good for 11, first down. But normally you might say start running the football, you've got the lead here in the fourth quarter, but the way that they've passed it with such success, I don't know, maybe keep throwing it. Yeah, I think you brought up something that goes against conventional wisdom, right? In this stage of the game, you would think you would switch to a running attack, but you're exactly right. They've thrown it so well throughout the game. And trusting this quarterback, I think he continued to do so. Back-to-back -back nice gains. That one for 14 yards and another first. Starting to become a tough spot for this defense. You're down fourth quarter, looking a little fatigued maybe on that side of the ball. Partner, we've seen this before, haven't we? Because every coach we've ever talked to says body language is important. And now you're seeing guys with their hands on their hips, they're bent over, hands on their knees. And the offensive guys are just saying, let's just keep running it at them. We've got them now. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. Two things to watch. First is strength and being able to break out that initial contact. But at his size, once you slow his momentum, it's hard for him to get it started again and end up tackling him behind the line of scrimmage. Edwards. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. It'll go down as a two-yard loss, and it brings up a third down. That's a nice example of good team defense right there. Ball was snapped at the one-yard line. They knocked him back and caused a loss. But you notice they were trying to find any type of a gap to run through. Wasn't one available, and they stuffed the play. Under pressure, down he goes. Sacked at the 10. That sack by the DN, Danico Autry. Put Autry anywhere along the line, and he'll produce for you. At least seven and a half sacks in four of his last five seasons with the Colts and Titans.
So Jackson will head to the Ravens sideline and on comes Justin Tucker for the field goal try. From the right hash here should be an easy one. Tucker's kick is good and that will extend their lead even further. Well, I don't know if they would have gone for it on fourth and goal anyway, but the sack on third down pretty much made their mind up for them. You're exactly right about that. And this is a tough place on the field to take a sack because, as you just noted, it took the decision making away from them. Now they have to go for a field goal instead of potentially going for it. Tucker now following the main field goal set to kick it away. And it'll come out to the 25 as he will not attempt to return. The Titans offense now, they work their way back onto the field. Well, we said it at halftime that they would need a nearly perfect second half to erase that deficit that they were facing, CD. But unfortunately, the second half has pretty much been a carbon copy of the first. Yeah, that early lead was almost insurmountable the way their opponent was playing. And, partner, they do have some good news, though. This one is getting close to being over, and they can try and hit the reset button starting tomorrow. Tannehill's throw hauled in by Westbrook Akine here. And he's going to get a good gain of nine here up to the 34. Simple drag route here, lined up out left and tried to work his way back across the field. You probably saw me twitch there, partner, because I think he wanted the ball a little bit sooner. By the time he looked it in, defender was right on him. A shotgun snap for Tannehill. Open man, Westbrook Akine. And he'll be forced out of bounds all the way down inside the 20. A big play that time for the Titans. 49 yards. And the offense is saying to itself right now, only they were all this easy because he was wide open. And once he made the catch, plenty of room to work his way downfield. That was a breakdown on the defensive side of the ball, one that they want to fix immediately. Henry will get it. He's been busy today. And he will score. Touchdown, Titans. Derrick Henry with his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Titans are able to make some inroads here to that deficit. Great call to hand that one off. And his running back did the rest. Someone read their keys correctly. And on the defensive side of the ball, they certainly did not because they really essentially were just going to swarm the quarterback. They kind of guessed themselves out of the play. And guess who benefited? The guy with the football. And he's going to get into the end zone for two. And they're back within two scores. Down 15 now. Well, it's still an uphill battle from here, that's for sure. But that makes it a two-score game. And now we see why teams practice so much on the two-point conversion, why you have more than one play ready. Because you may need multiples throughout a ball game. There's a great example right there. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. Duvernay going to sit on this in the end zone, so it'll come out to the 25. Baltimore's offense starting another drive. It's Gus Edwards at running back. He's already hit pay dirt twice. He's up over 100 yards. He is feeling good. And he's just zipping along today. Everything coming together for him. It's that type of a day that you see it back. Just kind of have a grin on his face every time his number is called because he doesn't feel like there are going to be any lost yardage plays. Nothing but big time positive runs. Making the sideline grin as well. And they run with Edwards off the option. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. On this day, the ground has been his, but at least on that individual play, we just saw the defense finally with a win. Yeah, they finally got one, and that's a win for them, but all game long. He's seen the holes, and they've been huge for him. 
kind of like a baseball hitter in the zone. The ball seems bigger, and he's just whacking it. These guys, they've got it going today. Two runs in a row, but only two yards to show for it. At this stage of the game, with a score where it is, the key here is to hand bounds, and he did just that. Not by a huge margin, but he stayed in. And those come up in what we like to call winning edge meetings. The things that you have to do, late game situations, kicking situations, doesn't matter what it is, the things you have to do to win a game, and that comes up in that meeting, then you practice it, they've got to be happy to see it executed and being able to stay in bounds and work the clock. It'll be a gain of five. And it'll be fourth down. Such a tough position to defend near the line, even when you add a second defender. But the big man shrugged off the extra body and made the play call a success. The Ravens send their punter out now as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. And a fair catch signaled for and taken successfully. It'll be 37 yards there on the punt. Tennessee offense set to go again. Well, still a long way to go, but trending upward. They scored the last time out, you remember. Then their defense forced the punt. Now they try to inch closer, but still ultimately down two scores in the final quarter. Tannehill and the Titans come up now first and 10 at their own 27. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. A short throw taken in by Conquo. That's a gain of four as we slip inside of four minutes left in regulation. Fourth quarter, every drive so critical, and you figure may only get one more shot after this, so a touchdown's imperative on this drive. It is, but you also have to think to yourself in play calling, don't hold anything back. Don't save it for the second touchdown. You got the first one for the second one to even matter. Tannehill. A short throw taken in by Conquo. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. They call his number again. It's his sixth catch and a first down. But correct me if I'm wrong. You're down two scores. I don't think you need to rush just yet, but you can't take your time either. Yeah, even if you don't want to commit to full two-minute offense, you have to up the tempo, up the urgency. Maybe you're starting to call two plays in a huddle each time you snap the ball. Tannehill. And that one off the mark behind him, incomplete. A good job in coverage there. They took away his top read on the play, so he went through his progressions and ended up settling on his running back who scored on their last possession. But the coverage held, it goes incomplete. Ball on the 42 as they come up second and 10. Again, Tannehill. A short throw taken in by Conquo. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. In this situation, the dictation is coming from the defense, right? They're going to tell you. You can have six, seven yards, do that all the way downfield. Let's just go ahead and take the time off the clock. I think they've got to start attacking vertically a lot more. They're going to hurry back to the line now. Tannehill on third down. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he's going to be taken down with the first down at the Ravens' 41-yard line. The third down conversion successful, a gain of 11. And in a two-score game, obviously, every play, every third down, like we saw there, magnified big pickup. It was a huge pickup. What they really want, though, is to not even get to third down. They've got to maximize time and conserve as much as possible. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. This could be the start of a nice stand from this defense now after getting walked backwards on this drive. Come through with another one here, and you have them staring at a third and long, and that puts the defense in a position to dictate to the offense. They'll try again here, second and 10. To the air again, Tannehill. Out route, and this is Henry with a catch. And he is out of bounds, but not before he's inside the 30. Clock management, definitely critical here if they want to get back in this game. Absolutely agreed. They have to up the tempo in this case, down a couple of scores, want to make sure they have a chance to win this ball game. All three timeouts plus the two-minute warning. Here's first and 10. A throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Everything looked right on that play except the conclusion. He dropped it. An in route going into a little bit of traffic. Maybe in the back of his mind, he was wondering where the hit was going to come from. Here comes second down. Come on, 
Back to throw, Tannehill. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Hopkins. So the Titans in possession of the football here as we get your reset. They face a third down now as they try to find a late score. So they just need one yard here to pick up the first down. Now Tannehill. And he will not be able to hang on to the contact. It's incomplete. The coverage strong, and now it's fourth down. That means it's just one last chance left, and this has to be a first down or a touchdown, or this game's over. Who wants it more? This is fourth and a yard. They'll run for it with Henry. And it was a stiff arm there that freed him enough to get the first before he's tackled. He's been tough for this defense to handle over 100 yards. You kind of knew that they were going to him on that play, didn't you? They certainly did. That's one of those situations where you simply say, my best runner over my best blockers, let's go ahead and pick it up. And I don't care if they know it on the other side. Here we come, and they got it done. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Whew, that's certainly not the worst thing. It stops the clock and lets your offense catch its breath and lets us exhale a little bit. Now I expect them to call a couple plays in the huddle, so they're ready if a tackle happens inbounds. From the 17, they work on second and 10. Tannehill. And he'll get this underneath to Henry. And now they're inside the 10 as he's brought down at the 9. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers' tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. Throwing Tannehill. And this is caught for a touchdown. sure win-win is the proper term here, but it certainly felt like it. They had the touchdown they needed, but if I'm on the defensive side of the ball, okay, you got the touchdown, but it sure took you a long time. Yeah, because offensively there, you're probably hoping for a one to five play drive. That one ate up a little more time than they were hoping. You're exactly right, and if you have that one to five play drive, you actually build up momentum and even more hope. When they had to slog their way downfield, they got the touchdown, but it's almost like, ah. Yeah. Yeah, you know. It doesn't you kinda, feel right. Exactly. Extra point up and good by Folk as this gets him back within a touchdown and a two-point conversion. So there is still time, a little over 50 seconds to go, but this becomes a critical onside kick. And who's got it? I think the Ravens do, yes. And they're going to win this football game. Well, fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it, they do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. I just wonder if that number is much more of a anecdotal type of a number. Kind of like when the coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 93% of the time you win the game. I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical. We couldn't ask for much more to this point in the second half. A gorgeous day, one score game. First and ten here. A handoff running left. It's Hill. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down. Second and right at a yard.
Running left is Edwards. And he has the Ravens first down, and it would appear that that's going to be the one to do it. The Ravens taking a knee with victory seemingly in hand here. Now the Titans will use their third and final timeout as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the game. And they will take a knee here. Yeah, it's fun to kneel down in front of your home crowd, but when you go on the road, that band of brothers attitude, right? Just us against the world and get it done. <laughs> How happy are they? I remember a coach at a previous stop telling me, you get a win on the road, doesn't matter the opponent, get out of there like you stole something. And they, <laughs> they did in this one. Down to a knee goes Jackson, and that should seal it. So it's a win here for the Ravens, and it was just too much for Lamar Jackson. He really played well. Yeah, I thought this defense just didn't have an answer for him all game long. They tried to change things up, but he was always one step ahead. And he finished with over 300 yards passing and two touchdown passes as well.